everybody and welcome back to the hidden breach and our i don't know how many malifo third edition battle report today jens is back and brings us Karis reborn and is playing versus my victoria's twin blades we are trying out two of the new titles today and i think it will be a fun game if you agree let us know in the comments as we jump right into crew selection and the scenario today's scenario we are playing flank deployment our strategy is turf war and our schemes are breakthrough detonate charges vendetta hidden martyrs and research mission crew selection attacker first i'm playing victoria twin blades and because of that i can play the student of conflict as my totem i play the henchman taylor the enforcer vanessa the Enforcer, Big Jake. The new Enforcer, Kenshiro the Tactician, and his minions, a Ronin, another Ronin, and the hero of the battle, the Desperate Mercenary. I take five soul stones with me into the game. Jens as Defender is playing Karis Reborn, the Totem, the Eternal Flame, the Henchman, Carlos Vasquez, the Enforcer, Fire Golem. The Enforcer, Lia Borgman, with the upgrade, Soulstone Cash. The new Enforcer, Deacon Hillcrest, and as a minion, a Firebranded, with the upgrade, Magical Training. And Jens takes six Soulstones with him into the game. You can now see which schemes we cleverly chose in 3, 2, 1. I present you today's terrain. In the bottom left corner, there's the bridge and the wizard's tower. The bridge is height for climbable terrain. The wizard's tower is height infinite impassable terrain. And staircases are played as staircases. There's a small lake on the left side and all water on the map anyways is played as severe terrain. The small park to the right side of the wizard's tower is played entirely as concealing terrain without any further terrain traits. In the bottom right corner, we got the tavern another huge terrain piece the terrace is height 3 climbable and the rest of the building is height infinite impassable then we got our fishing lake with a bridge and the small pier and a broken boat everything is height 1 climbable and the lake is as mentioned severe terrain we have to have a gallows in our historical city so the gallows are high 2 blocking climbable terrain we got a fog bank on the left side which counts as concealing dense terrain we got some more houses which are height for impassable blocking terrain and the ruins on the top right of the map are played as impassable for the roof part and then each floor counts as a height 2 climbable terrain piece. Everything else on the map counts as height 1 blocking impassable scatter terrain. So welcome to deployment. I as attacker chose the bottom right side and Jens chose the half of my crew with the two Ronins, Kenshiro the tactician, the victorious and the desperate mercenary for me to deploy. I place one Ronin on the bottom left of the tavern the Vix right in front of the tavern, the mercenary standing next to the marker getting ready for his big moment to turn it over, Kenshiro is chilling out in the boat and one Ronin is on the bridge on the top right side of my deployment zone. Then Jens has to go. He places his whole crew between the houses from right to left. It's the fire golem, Karis, Carlos, a firebranded, the eternal flame, Deacon Hillcrest and Elijah Borgman. And second half of my crew is Big Jake is on the left. Taylor and Vanessa are standing next to the Vix and the student of conflict is standing next to the desperate mercenary. Here you see the hand cards round one for the Victoria crew and here are the hand cards round one for Kara's crew. Initiative flip round one. It's five to four in favor of the Victorious and I decide for Jens to begin. He begins and plays a pass token. My first activation of the game is the Desperate Mercenary, having his big moment. He interacts twice, once with the Strat Marker to turn it over to our side and the second time to drop a Ski Marker under the Student of Conflict. Jens activates the Firebranded, who interacts with the Turf Marker and concentrates for a focus. I answer with the Victorious, who use their action Treasure Seekers. They pass with a 12 and lay a ski marker in front of them. I can then discard a card of every mercenary model within 
pulse four inches, so I discard a card for Vanessa and one for Taylor for them to focus. They then use combat maneuver on Taylor and fail with the three. I cheat the nine of crows and teleport Taylor towards the center of the map. Then the Vix take a walk action and activate the bonus action, 1000 cards, making everything in one inch aura hazardous terrain. Jens activates Carlos and Karis and the golem get burning plus one because of his start of activation pulse. Carlos takes a double walk action towards the bottom side of the map and then uses on the pyre. He fails with the 13 but Jens cheats the 7 of tomes to succeed and drops a pyre marker. It's big Jake time. He drops a scheme marker, uses his bonus action and passes with a 10. I look at the top two cards of my deck and discard both a 3 and a 4. And then big Jake takes a walk action climbing over the fence. The fire golem activates and Karis gets burning plus one because of the starting pulse. He uses fire tornado on himself and Karis and passes with a 6. He and Karis get burning plus three out of failing the duel. Then the fire golem takes a walk action to the right side of the map. I activate my first Ronin who has on the move and so can move over the fence and then takes a double walk action until she is in base contact with the strategy marker. Eternal Flame goes and does a double walk action toward the bottom side of the map. The Student of Conflict activates and does Covetous Cravings on Taylor. He fails and I cheat a 10. I remove the scheme marker and Taylor gets fast. And then we repeat the process on Vanessa. I pass with an 8 and remove the second scheme marker and Vanessa also gains fast. And that ends the activation of the Student of Conflict. Jens plays a second pass token, so I activate my second Ronin, who's on the move and once again does a double walk action to be in base contact with the strategy marker and the house on the top right side of the map. Now Jens activates Karis, who does Eruption of Flames. She fails, but cheats in a 4 and drops a Pyre marker next to the golem. She and the golem get burning plus one. Then she moves next to the golem and gets burning plus one because of walking into the pyre marker. She does melting point, pushes the golem to inches, and the golem gets burning plus two and Karis gets burning plus one. And finally she uses call of the burning man, passes with an 11, does her healing flip and gets another burning plus one because of doing it in the pyre marker and one because of succeeding with the action. Activate Vanessa and use intuition. I put the three cards back like I pulled them from the deck and Vanessa's action is just a simple walk action and then she interacts to drop a scheme marker and then she concentrates for a focus. Jens activates Deacon Hillcrest and then he takes a walk action. He uses Call of the Burning Man but fails sadly with the Black Joker and concentrates for a focus. Kenshiro activates getting awake in his little boat and takes a walk action and then takes a concentrate action for a focus. Liar Borkman activates Activates, takes a double walk action over to the right side behind the house. I activate Taylor who is fast at this point and she takes a double walk action towards the middle of the map and for her fast IP uses a charge action. Because she has rush she has a charge range of 7 and then she uses her focus to attack the fire branded with her 7th against defense hammer. The duel fails with 16 to 17 and I cheat 13 for 20 to 17 with the puncture trigger because the fire branded has the magical training upgrade, I have to discard my last card because of the counter spell ability and announce the puncture trigger. As the ends can't cheat, I have a positive flip, draw severe damage of 6, ignoring shielded, which kills off the fire branded. So Yen's strategy marker becomes neutral again. Summary round 1. We got the mercenary crew on the move, Big Jake is standing in the forest and the Ronin next to the bottom left strategy marker. Mercenary and the student of conflict are hanging back a bit. Vanessa and the Vix advance towards the middle, Kenshiro and the Ronin advanced toward the top right side of the map and Taylor walked straight into the opponent's deployment zone and killed the Firebranded. As for the Karis crew, the Eternal Flame and Carlos are staking their claim on the left side of the map while everything else does a conga line um, in between the houses towards the right side of the map. As it is round one there will be no points so onwards with hand cards and initiative flip for round two. And here you can see the hand cards for the Victorias in round two. Well those are the hand cards for the Karis crew in round two. Initiative flip in round two. We draw 9 to 2 in Jens favor. I decide not to cheat and Jens decides to start. And because I'm not a complete idiot this time I remember to use my battle tempo ability 
and push everyone two inches around the map which you can see right now and everyone within eight inches of Kenshiro is allowed to do a move of two inches. Jens activates Keras. She starts on a pyre marker, so she can charge through models and terrain. Charges through Elia Borkman and attacks Taylor with a melee action. Because she has burning plus three or higher, Jens can declare a trigger of his liking with each action, and so he decides that he will from now on always declare mask for touch of madness. The first attack hits with 15 to 13, and the negative flip does weak damage of two, and I use a soul stone to prevent the damage completely. Because because of Touch of Madness we roll a dice and I have to discard the 12 of Rams which hurts a bit. The next attack hits again with 19 to 13 and Jens again declares Touch of Madness. I use a Soul Stone to put Jens on a negative flip and the attack again does weak damage. I this time take the damage and I again discard a random card which is this time the 6 of Crows. Last AP of Karis, she attacks again, so Karis third attack hits with 10 to 8, I declare not to cheat, Jens cheats in an A to get to a straight flip, I again spend a soul stone to put him on a negative flip, but he draws the red joker anyway, doing 6 damage. I decide for Taylor to take the 6 damage because I have given up hope of her surviving any longer and I have to discard a random card because of the touch of madness trigger which this time is the black joker. Because of the severe damage Jens can also drop a pyre marker into base contact with Taylor and afterwards uses Kara's bonus action which is call of the burning man, passes with a 6 but he cheats for the trigger to drop another pyre marker and the value healed doesn't really matter. I decide to activate Taylor before she dies and she uses her melee attack on Karis and hits with 20 to 17 after cheating. I declare the puncture trigger and have a negative flip because of heart to wound. I do weak damage of 3. Let's do this again. We hit with 12 to 7 and the double negative flip because of heart to wound does moderate damage of 4. Jens uses a soul stone to prevent damage and prevents it by 2 so Karis gets 2 damage from the attack taking 5 damage in total from Taylor's activation. And I decide to discard my last hand card to get rid of the burning from Taylor via the shrug of bonus action. So now Jens activates Elia Borkman who takes a charge action in direction of Taylor and attacks with his great swords. He hits with 19 to 9 and the straight flip does moderate damage of 4 putting Taylor on hard to kill. Then Jens uses a concentrate action for a focus and at the end of his activation reveals that he has Vendetta with Elia Borkman on Taylor. So with the first point in Jens pocket I activate the Ronin at the wizard's tower who has on the move walks uh, to the left side of the tower takes a walk action and a charge action and attacks the eternal flame with a Daito. The attack hits 14 to 5 and the straight flip does 3 damage ignoring armor so the eternal flame is killed and drops a scrap marker. Fire golem goes takes a walk action towards the right side and then a charge action and attacks the Ronin. The fire golem hits 13 to 12 and Jens declares the inbuilt blaze trigger and also has a second tome because the golem has burning 3 or higher. The negative flip however does severe damage of 5 and burning plus 2. So the Ronin is right now sitting on hard to kill. I activate the desperate mercenary who takes a walk action and then drops a scheme marker like a boss. Jens plays a pass token so I activate the student of conflict who does covet his cravings on Vanessa, fails with the one and I use one of the epic tactic tokens from Kenshiro the tactician to cheat with the top card of my fate deck and luckily pass with a nine. I discard a ski marker and Vanessa gets fast. Then the student of conflict takes a walk action and ends her activation. Jens spends a second pass token so I activate Kenshiro the tactician who takes a double walk action and then activates his bonus action seeking the blade which allows everyone of my crew who successfully hits with the melee action to look at the top two cards of my fate deck and draw any joker they see there. Jens activate Carlos who does the dance of flame and passes with a 7. He moves 5 towards the marker then takes a walk action and then interacts with the turf marker to secure that point. I activate my second Ronin who's on the move then interacts with the turf marker and then moves over towards the middle side of the map. Jens goes with 
with Deacon Hillcrest, who does a walk action and gets burning plus one and shielded plus one from the pyre marker. And then he uses his burning plus one for a positive flip for his flame blast on Kenshiro. Kenshiro has cover and the attack failed sadly 16 to 20, despite Jens having a positive flip. I go with Vanessa, who uses intuition, which reveals some tasty cards. And after that, I decide to put the Joker on the bottom and use the other cards for healing energy on the wounded Ronin. I pass with the 7 and Vanessa draws the Severe to heal the Ronin by 3 up to 4 health again. Then Vanessa takes a double walk action to stand on the center line next to the middle strategy marker. Now I had this great idea. Activating Big Jack who takes a walk action, uses an interact action to flip the turf marker and then he uses his bonus action passing with the red Joker. So I can look at the two top cards of my fate deck and decide to put them back like I drew them. Then I activate the Victorias, who do their bonus action claim the bounty and I take away both of the scheme markers in within 4 inches and draw the top two cards of my discard pile, which are the red joker and an 11. Then they take a walk action, another walk action, which gets them into Yen's starting zone and then use their treasure seeker's ability to pass and place a scheme marker in Yen's deployment zone. So let's have a look at the end of game effect. Deacon Hillcrest loses his shielded, the Ronin suffers 1 damage from burning, Karis burns and gives her burning damage over to Taylor, so Taylor takes the damage and Karis burning condition gets reduced by 3. Because Carlos has burning, he decides to give the Victorious distracted plus 1. As for summary turn 2, the mercenary is still standing strong at the strategy marker, student and Vanessa are standing in the center and the Ronin has turned over the marker and escaped from the fire golem. Kenshiro is on a secret mission standing under the roof. The Victorias are in Yen's deployment zone. Big Jake is at the bottom left strategy marker and the Ronin here on the left side killed the eternal flame and is looking towards Yen's deployment zone. Kara's crew is still in the starting zone but have eventually gotten over the Taylor attack and killed her after a long defensive melee battle and have turned their turf war marker again. Kara's Elida, Deacon Hillcrest and Carlos are huddled up there. Points wise every one of us gets a strategy point. Jens has the top left marker and I got the top right, bottom right and bottom left strategy markers on my side. Jens already has declared one point for Vendetta and I will now declare a point for Breakthrough because the Victorias have walked into Jens deployment zone and successfully dropped a scheme marker. Hand cards round 3 for the Victoria crew and here are the hand cards round 3 for the Karis crew. Jens used the Soulstone to get two more cards. Initiative flip round 3. Jens wins out 12 to 1 and I decide not to cheat and Jens decides that he wants to begin. During the start phase I do battle tempo movements, pushes, so bear with me while I do this. It takes an awful lot of time but it's important, nearly there now. Alright, Jens activates Carlos who does his attack action Breath of Fire on the Victorias. And after he cheats to a 12, I cheat to a 13 for the attack to fail. Jens does it again and this time after cheating he hits with 14 to 13 and gets the blaze trigger. The negative flip does of course moderate damage of 3 and gives the Victorious burning plus 2. I use a soul stone for damage reduction and draw severe, so no damage but burning plus 2 for the Victorious. And then Jens uses Carlos bonus action the dance of flames, passes with the 10 and moves to get burning plus one from the pyre marker. I activate Kenshiro the tactician. He uses a charge action and then attacks Deacon Hillcrest and uses his focus because Deacon is of course manipulative and I have to bypass that. I hit with 14 to 14 and the double negative flip does weak damage of one. Then Kenshiro uses master tactician on Karis and passes with 12 to 8 and Karis has to discard a random card because she has an yet unrevealed scheme. Jens has to discard the Seven of Rams. And then Kenshiro activates the Seeking the Blade bonus action which is stupid because it should have been done at the start of his activation, but whatever. Jens activates Deacon Hillcrest as we are in the Deacon Strikes Back. He uses his bonus action, passes with a 5 and heals 3, gets another burning. He uses his melee attack, the attack hits 16 to 9 and the straight flip does moderate damage of 2. Kenshiro only takes 1 damage because of incorporeal and 
and gets burning plus two. Then Jens uses his melee attack again and uses his burning for a positive flip, but the attack fails due to a double one with six to 70. I go with Big Jake who takes a walk action, interacts to drop a ski marker and then uses his bonus action. He passes with a seven and I look at the top cards of my fate deck and leave them as they are because I like them. Jens activates Karis, Karis starts in the pyre marker, moves over towards the center of the map and charges. The resulting attack action is against the student of conflict. We both cheat and the attack finally fails 17 to 18 because I cheat in the red joker. Then Karis attacks again and fails with 14 to 16 because I'm on a luck streak right there. Then Karis uses her bonus action call to the burning man and passes with a 6. And Jens draws the red joker to heal her by 4, so she is just one health missing at this point. And Karis gets another burning. I activate the Ronin, who is on the move, then takes a walk action and then charges to attack Carlos, but fails with 6 to 13 and I have no cards to cheat anymore. So Carlos uses Butterfly Jump to get away from the Ronin toward the center of the map. Jens spends a pass token, so I go with the Student of Conflict, who takes a disengage action against Karis. Jens fails, but then passes and hits me with 11 to 11 and the double negative flip does weak damage. So my movement gets reduced by 2 and the Student of Conflict pushes four inches away. Then she takes a walk action towards the top side of the map. Jens activates the fire golem who takes a walk action and then charges the student of conflict. He hits with 18 to 16 and declares the blaze trigger. The negative flip does weak damage of three and gives the student of conflict burning plus two because of Kara's ability to have everyone with burning plus three declare extra triggers. I activate the victorious who take a walk action into the pyre marker and get burning plus one and they charge and get another burning to have now burning plus four and then they attack Deacon Hillcrest. They lose their distracted and are on a straight flip because they have an inbuilt positive flip in their melee attack. They hit with 18 to 18 and the double negative flip does weak damage of 3. Then they attack again with the positive flip this time and hit with 19 to 12. The straight flip does moderate damage of 4 which kills Deacon Hillcrest at this point, turning the strategy marker in Jens deployment zone neutral again. At this point we sadly forgot Deacon Hillcrest's demise ability which would have damaged the Victorious and Kenshiro further. I think it wouldn't have changed anything in the outcome of the game, but still, sorry for that in the first show of this model on this channel. And then the Victorious activate the 1000 cuts bonus action to have a Liar Borgman stand in the hazardous terrain. Jens plays a pass token, so I activate the Ronin who is on the move, then she interacts to drop a ski marker and then takes a walk action into Jens deployment zone. Jens plays another pass token, so I activate Vanessa who has into and I put the cards back as I draw them. I shoot Carlos with my focus and have a straight flip because Carlos has concealment. I hit with 10 to 10 and the negative flip does moderate damage of 3. Jens uses a soul stand for damage reduction, reduces the damage by 1 and gets 2 damage. Then he uses butterfly jump. I use my second focus to shoot Carlos again but fail with 17 to 19 and lastly use my bonus action I've got your back on the student of conflict and I pass with the 13 so the student is placed in base contact with Vanessa. Jens plays his last pass token. I activate the desperate mercenary hero of the game who decides that it's time to shoot the fire golem. He hits with 9 to 8 and the negative flip does 1 damage. Then he shoots again and passes with 17 to 9 and the straight flip with the bloody fate trigger does severe damage after cheating. 5 damage sadly reduced by 2 due to reducing the burning condition on the golem. And I use the trigger, draw a card and discard a card. Lastly I discard a card for rapid fire and shoot the golem again Yeah, and draw the black joker. But after all I'm pretty happy with what desperate mercenary has done in this game so far. Jens activates Elia Borgman who attacks the Victorious and hits 11 to 6. The straight flip because of the greatsword does weak damage of 3 and I use my last soul stone to reduce the damage by 2 and then Elia attacks again but fails with 7 to 10. Jens decide, decides at this point that he won't use Call of the Burning Man because he has already taken 2 damage from the hazardous terrain he's standing in. Summary of round 3. The desperate mercenary is hanging out on my table 
table half shooting the fire golem. The rest is on the other table half. Student of conflict dies due to the burning condition, Karis gets 3 burning damage and passes it over to Big Jake, because why not. The Ronin suffers 1 burning damage and the Victorious suffered 2 burning damage at this point. At this point I have 3 strategy markers and gain another point for the strategy. Jens at this point has no strategy markers and gains no point for the strategy. Nobody has a scheme to declare so the current score is 3 to 2 in favor of the Victorious as we go in round 4. So round 4 will only be a summary because A our Technic failed us and Jens had not enough models to do anything really worthwhile from this point onwards. So summary goes like this. I had very very good hand cards and Jens didn't have any good hand cards. I cheated initiative and activated the Victorious who reduced Elia Borgman to 3 health and Jens cheated all his good cards to defend. Then they activated 1000 cuts. Jens activated Elia and reduced the Victorious to 3 hearts, taking 2 damage in the process from the hazardous terrain. Big Jake started hitting Carlos who took some damage and used butterfly jump to get away. The fire golem shockwaved and burned the desperate mercenary and then used draw flame to jump over to him. The ronin, Archie Lia Borgman, killed him with one attack, interacted for a scheme marker and suicided herself for two more soul stones. Karis flew over to the desperate mercenary, used her bonus action to drop a pyre marker into base contact with herself and then one attack killed the desperate mercenary for a tasty corpse marker. Vanessa decided that it was time to shoot Carlos, finish him off with a lucky shot. The second Ronin dropped a ski marker and walked to the top left strategy marker in preparation of the next round. At the end of the round Jens declared one point for research mission and I got another strategy point so the current score was 4 to 3 in favor of the victorious. Sadly at this point Jens only had two models left and his vendetta model had already died. Two models are not enough to score the second point of research mission and he had not really any chance to score another strategy point so he would have stayed on the three points. I would have scored I think another point for breakthrough safely and most assuredly a point for the strategy. So we said that the game would have ended at a 6 to 3 at this point because I had hidden martyrs on Big Jake and Kenshiro the tactician and I was not sure if I could have gave, get somebody engaged by Karis or not which would have been dependent on Jens moving Karis maybe in the center of the board and engaging her with Kenshiro and or Big Jake. So at the end it was a good game. I think we are not super experienced with this cruise and I think if you want to see competitive play you have to look elsewhere but we had fun um, the board looked great and yeah I hope you enjoyed it too I will see you at the next bet report here at the hidden breach thank you for watching subscribe and bye bye all right I hope everybody had as much fun watching us as we had fun playing um, sorry for the little mistakes, it happens. We got the next bad report filmed already, although it might be a while, it might be May till you actually get to see it here on YouTube because I have to slather a lot of paint onto a lot of miniatures and also I want to film as many videos as possible before summer hits us, during which we here don't have the opportunity to really film any more battle reports, so bear with me. Watch our old videos if you get bored or watch me fail in the Vassal World series. I think both alternatives are worth seeing. Anyhow, if you like our content, subscribe to our channel, give us a like, follow us on Instagram or Facebook and I'll see you back here at the Hidden Breach for our next Malifaux 3rd edition battle report.